Okay, thank you. Welcome back to Ideas That We Can Be On It. And again, we have uh, Mr. Julio Lopez. He's the former Denbury Deputy Director of Personnel. And we have uh, Mr. Eric Conrad of News Time. We have Matt Grimes from Brookfield. And also we have uh, um, Matt Heiser. Martin Matty Martin. Heiser. <laughs> He's the uh, Richfield Chairman Board of um, Finance. And I promise you that we we're going to discuss um, News Time. Actually, News Time just sold. And, but before we do that, you know, I want to talk about my breaking news. The mayor decided that he is going to purchase the equipment needed to broadcast all the meetings at City Hall from the government channel. So hopefully in January, you will see that. This is great news. I don't have to do all that work anymore. This is great. And Mr. Conrad, how, do you, uh, how are you going to approach this tomorrow? Well, I don't know. I mean, I'm here on the show right now. I wish I had called in the newsroom before you broke the news, so congratulations <laughs> on the scoop. But we have editorially supported the idea of open, opening these meetings. Uh, we think access to government is extremely important, um, and I'm glad to see it's happened as well. Um, you know, if you're a journalist and you have to believe in access to government, is what it's all about. I believe democracies open in the, uh, uh, perform best in the sunshine and worse in the dark, and uh, it's, it's a nice development. I agree. Congratulations on your scoop. And Ivan, you know, we did a couple stories about the fact that you took your cameras in there to those meetings, and you sort of you sort of started doing it on your own, and I'm not sure mm -hmm. what have happened without you, so I think you deserve uh, commending for that. Right, and I would like, thank you, thank you. I would like to also say that John Newmiller um, joined the team, and, and also um, I cannot, cannot forget to say that um, um, Len Waller, had, um, ha had been fighting this for years. Is, is this what I did? I did the footwork. I just took the camera and said, "Look, I'm gonna do this." And, and <laughs> so, right. So anyway, we have a call, so we're gonna take it. Call her your name. Hi, Ivan Lynn. Hi, Lynn. How you doing? I'm fine. How are you? <laughs> Good. But uh, one thing, you're not gonna get out of all the work that you've been doing. Okay. They are buying the equipment to broadcast, not to take the ca the pictures. You guys still have to do the taping work. Okay. Great. Great. Okay. Great. So, uh, and it may not be accomplished by January. You know, cities don't move that quickly. It may take a month or two because they've got to go to bid and get that stuff and get it installed and all of that. But it will happen. Um, the mayor said he would do it. I'm not sure you should have scooped him tonight. I think he wanted to talk about it himself. Actually, I... I spoke to him. Oh, and did he, you? Yes, I spoke to him on the phone. He said to go ahead and announce it because that's what he's going to do. Okay. I, I hope he calls because um, because I would like for him to confirm that on the show. Come on, Lynn Ivan's a journalist. He's supposed to scoop the mayor. That's, <laughs> that's the whole idea. <laughs> well, we scooped him today. Maybe that's him on the other line. My show's just not on until tomorrow, so you beat me to it, too. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's okay. No problem. Okay. Um, actually, I'm really proud of what you guys have been doing, and I'm glad if that's what brought it to pass, then that's what brought it to pass. But uh, it, it's still going to require the volunteers to go in and do the taping, and then they will just run it on their tape recorders and that sort of thing. Good. But I had a couple questions. One for Mr. Lopez. Okay. Where did you end up? And two for Mr. Conrad. Um, Meaning, where did you end up with your job, Mr. Lopez? And two, uh, Mr. Conrad, are you staying with the News Times now that your company has been bought out? Can we look forward to seeing your face in the paper and your columns continue? Which one do you want to do first? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Bye-bye. Okay. Let's start with Mr. Lopez, and then we'll go. Well, so. right now I'm enjoying my grandkids and uh, working around the house. Um, I was supposed to be working for Catholic um, the Family and Children's Aid, but uh, some issues politically got involved, and I decided to decline the position July 7th. I was supposed to start working July 10th. But I'm having a great time enjoying my family, and uh, I'm getting used to it. But so you don't I'm, feel like a grandfather, do you? No. <laughs> but they make me feel like a grandfather when they're all four of them together. No, I'm enjoying my kids and my grandkids, and uh, we're having a great time. So eventually, I probably do something come next spring. So we, I'm taking the family away for a vacation in Puerto Rico for a week, and all the grandkids and together. And then from there, I think about something. Okay. okay. Great. The uh, yeah, News Times was purchased last week by a company out of Alabama called Community Newspaper Holdings. Uh, well, good thing about the company is they, they plan no management changes. That's encouraging. <laughs> um, and yeah, more importantly, uh, the people behind the paper aren't as important as the newspaper itself. And our commitment, the News Times commitment to local journalism is not going to change. You're not going to see dramatic uh, changes 
in the newspaper because of our new owners. In fact, you know, a new editor, and we've made some significant changes since I came here in May, often has more impact on the newspaper than who owns it. Okay, good. We're going to discuss that further, okay? Thank you. Caller, you're in the air. Hello, caller. Oh, ooh, we lost that. Caller, please call back. Okay, we want to hear what you have to say. Can I just ask uh, Eric something about this? Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, this one of the things I heard about this company that purchased the News Times in Alabama is they pretty much buy successful local entities, successful local papers. And when you buy successful local papers, you don't change much because it's got a good rapport with its readership, it's got a good rapport with its advertisers, with its uh, subscribers and such. And I think that, that that's one of the positive things. I mean, it's not like they when purchased a, a, flail, a, a failing newspaper or anything like that. I would agree. You know, I mean, the, the, the News Times is probably profitable and made up, I think, about $7 million in profit last year, which is nothing to sneeze at. The newspaper industry is profitable as an industry. It's making between uh, 18 and 20 percent margins. That's something that grocery store and retail chains would kill for. Mm -hmm. The problem with newspapers is our future is kind of bleak. Readership is going down. Circulation is going down. Online readership is up dramatically, but we haven't figured out a way to make that work advertising-wise yet. That's the challenge that we face. Also, younger people uh, are reading less than they did before, at least less about news. So we have our work cut out for us. Uh, uh, Mr. Conrad, one of the um, concerns is that there's a lot of things that's going on with, with local governments and, and, the new, and the news time prior to that seemed to take a was it, la laser fair you know, attitude to it. Do you think there's going to be any, any changes to that or you will continue to run the news time the way you have um, I can't, I can't speak for the past. Again, I've been here seven months, but I think uh, we're far from a timid newspaper these days. Uh, last week we had a Sunday, we had a big takeout about Ritalin on campus, WestCon included. Uh, a Sunday or two before that, we had a nice investigative piece about the drownings at Squans Pond, and we found out that more than a third of the drownings in the last uh, six or eight years in Connecticut have been at Squans Pond, and yet the state runs 20 parks that have swimming facilities, so the numbers are way off the charts, and probably more needs to be done about that. So the News Times, I think, is doing a good job investigating and breaking uh, local news. Okay, good, good. Well, I, um, uh, I just, so I just hope that um, when it come up to, to News Time, because there's a lot going to be going on next year uh, locally. And um, as you know, there will be local elections here in Danbury, Bethel, right? Mm -hmm. Bethel, Richfield. Yep. And there will, there will be a lot of issues. And, and, and sometimes what happens is that, um, see, for example, um, tomorrow the mayor is going to give his, uh, his speech, right? What do you call it again? State of the city. State of the city. So he's going to be, I guess, talking about what he's going to do next year. Mm -hmm. So go ahead. Well, he actually comes a little early. He does his before the holiday season. Most of the first selectmen in the surrounding towns, like uh, Mr. Marconi over Ridgefield, Mr. Murphy, Brookfield and such, they do theirs in February and March, just before the Board of Finance gets the budget so they can lay out their vision for the year and make the Board of Finance feel that they're, uh, that they're doing the right job. Mayor chooses to do his before the holiday season when everybody's pretty much in a good mood and feeling well. Mm. Good, good. So, um, but you know, I'm going to actually tape it and I'm going to show it next next Thursday. So if anybody wants to hear what the mayor has to say, please tune in next Thursday so that you can hear it. But it's at high noon tomorrow at City Hall for those that would like to attend. But it's not at City Hall. It's not at City no, it's Hall. Not City Hall. The show. Um, I don't remember exactly, but if, if anybody has any a, a information about it, please call it. I think it's some hotel somewhere. I don't know. But but <laughs> is it the Sheraton? Right, right, right. So, anyways, my whole issue with, with the news time is, is that um, it's going to be a lot going on next year politically. I, I just want to know, like, how is going to be approached because a lot of people are going to depend on the news time to decide how they're going to vote. Right now, everybody is trying to get Tom Saudi to run for mayor. Well, and, who's everybody's and so, trying to get well, Tom Saudi well, to well, Ivan. Come on, Ivan. <laughs> well, put, see, put it this way. Who's everybody? The word, see, the word is, is that he's the best, you know, uh, competition to the mayor. Forget it. So that's what I've heard. Well, do you have anybody? But anyway, let's go back to the news time. <laughs> Unless you have someone that can compete with the mayor. No, there's a lot of people that can compete with Tom Saudi, though. There's a lot of people. You mentioned him last time. You ticked him off last time. I think Tom Saudi was number three or four in your mix. No, no, no. no. I, I didn't go by chronological order who I think is more or least important. No. Well, who is the everybody discussing? that wants Tom Saudi to run for mayor? Well, then, if anybody wants Tom Saudi to run for mayor, they can call in. <laughs> you live in Brookfield. What do you know about Dan? 
That's like so invite people from Brookfield and diss them on your show. That's, that's that information. Yeah, yeah, get your information. But anyway, um, um, how do you think that the, the paper is going to approach this whole election um, thing next year? Because people are going to depend on the city to address the key issues that they need to vote. Now we're going to we're going to approach this aggressively as we approach the issues right now that face the city. Immigration being one. Um, everything's you know the mayor's election is important. It's a strong mayor. Uh, Ballon will be will be challenged, and we're going to tell people what he stands for, what he's done right, what he's done wrong, and his opponent's strengths and weaknesses as well. This is great. I think it's very positive, and you've done that. With, you did that with every legislative candidate this year, every gubernatorial candidate, Senate candidate. They profiled every candidate at the News Times, and they always have done done well about something. I've really enjoyed about my new job. I, before I was a managing editor, not an editor, but I really enjoyed uh, the editorial board visits where we meet all the candidates. It's been a great uh, way for me to educate myself on Connecticut issues. Great. We have a phone call. Call your name. Hello. Hello. Stephen Thompson. I'm sure about the mayor. Getting sued by the Yale student. I'm sorry. I think we have the wrong number. We, we cannot hear you. How do you feel about the mayor getting sued by the Yale law students? Okay, sir, do me a favor. Take that paper off your mouth or whatever it is. Come out and say what you have to say, okay? If you want to address the mayor, you need to come clear because we cannot hear you. How do you feel about the mayor, I mean, I mean the city getting sued by the Yale students? The, the city getting sued by the Yale students. In New Haven? Oh, oh New no, Haven. No, no, they have... Uh, oh, the Denbury 11? Yeah, the Denbury 11. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. All right, thank you. Well, I can tell you a little bit about our story tomorrow. We did have a story today that looked like a possibility. What the Yale students are really doing is suing to get more information about what really happened with the ICE thing. They do want to look at the city's role, but I think they also want to look at what the Homeland Security Department that, that ICE falls under, what they did as well. What they're trying to get at is whether um, it's racial profiling on the part of the federal government and whether the city played a role in that. But they didn't file that suit today. They filed What they did is they filed requests today that would uh, try to uncover information to see whether they have a suit or not. So it's just a simple freedom of information request. It's, it's more than that, but that's essentially. But it's not a lawsuit at this point. Not at this no, point. No, okay. All right. Okay. I, I I wasn't familiar with that. I guess I'll be reading about it tomorrow. It was in today's paper a little bit, and we'll have more tomorrow. Correct. Okay. Good. Now, is there anything else that we need to look forward to with, with respect to the paper before just, we move to I'm anything else? When I come I'm thrilled yeah. when it comes to these shows that the News Times is like the centerpiece of the show. So I because this is that. the only, to, to, to be honest with you, this is the only thing we have, right? Paper, print, print paper that we have to educate ourselves. And, okay? and then we have WLAD. And, and, then, and, and so if, if it's not in here, we don't know. Now that there are five alternative language uh, weeklies mm -hmm. in town, we have a lot of competition. There are weeklies all over Danbury. Don't forget, we don't just serve yeah, Danbury. Uh, well, you know, I apologize. Uh, we've got competition. The Ridgefield Press is right there. We've got competition all over. We, don't, we do not take it for granted. <laughs> Put that down, man. Too much stock in there. Look at the other guy. There's another guy there. So we've got competition all over the place. But, but your point about uh, Danbury people relying on us is true. And that's why we have to be on the top of our game. We have to be aggressive urgent journalists because people are counting on us on city issues especially. I mean, it's the case with the smaller city newspaper in the state. I mean, it's not like, for example, the Connecticut Post, which serves Bridgeport, New Haven, Register, Hartford Current. I mean, News Times, New Britain Herald, New London Day are in a class by themselves. I mean, that's the second tier of the cities in the state, and they're served, that and the communities rely on these city papers mm -hmm. for, for their news. And the same would be true with the uh, uh, Westchester Journal News, mm -hmm. right across the uh, state line as well. Mm -hmm. yeah, one, one change that I had seen, uh, recently in news time is the objectivity. Uh, by experience, I had seen in the past issues that should be covered, and they were never, they were ignored. Political issues that people had the need to know, they were ignored, and I see that is changing, and I hope that it continues that way. Because also, there are many issues to come, and I, I guarantee you that. Also, one of, um, something that I need to bring to you, because there's this lady from the East Ditch. Now, I don't know, too much about the East Ditch, but if um, Miss Lynn Waller can call us, or that lady can call us, what I'm finding out too is that you have local people that have real issues. Mm -hmm. What's the East okay? Ditch? The, it's 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 an area. Um, um, there was ahead. a project. Go ahead. Sewer line. Explain that. Right. Been, because I, I had that contract in the contract compliance part of my job, and it was they were laying sewer lines to hook up to different residences, 
and that's what I recall from the East Stage project. You have they never get finished, or no, right? You have residents in in Danbury who would like things to be done where they live and pay taxes. If for years and years they have been going to City Hall trying to get these things fixed, but for some reason it's never fixed because of the fact that that you know it's not it's not you know politically um, expedient expedient or they don't get nothing out of it politically to me it's something that I would like to see the news time cover because that poor lady from the East Ditch for yet the, the Democrats didn't do anything ignore her the current administration is ignoring her I like those issues to be brought forward because those people are not being heard and I feel sorry for the lady but we have a call Call her your name. Oh, hi, Ivan. Hi, Miss Lynn. How are you? Good. Can you tell us about the East Ditch? Because to me, I don't think it's fair. Okay. Um, from what I understand, the area is Park Avenue over near the old courthouse. Uh, maybe it's Park Place. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's an area of the city of Danbury that floods constantly. All they need is two or three inches of rain. And where this came from is the growth of that side of town, uh, which was a swamp before, which goes along with Swamp Field of Danbury, fills up with water with a two or three inch rainfall. These people have for 26 to 28 years been fighting City Hall, trying to get uh, what they call the East Ditch, which runs from the Still River near White Street and Crosby Street across the back area into this area with the old courthouse on Main Street. And it is a small pipe. Uh, it's large enough you can stand up in it, I believe, but it needs to be larger to handle the amount of water in this general area. And it is a very expensive project, which is why no one is willing to underwrite it. You need five phases, and the city did underwrite one phase of it. They put in a million and a half dollars, and they have fixed the pipe between White Street and the ice skating rink. The next phase takes it up a little further, the next phase a little further. Where they're flooding is behind the Green Funeral Home, into the Green Funeral Home, into St. Peter's Church. Uh, all the areas on that side of the street are just going underwater, and it's mainly coming from the fact that they have allowed development to fill in swampland, and the water has to go somewhere, so it's going down Park Place yep. and causing problems. Now, they need four more phases of a million and a half per phase, and it's very difficult to get that through. There are other things that need doing in the city, but these guys have been putting up with this problem through lots of administrations. It's not just this administration. It was the one before and the one before and the one before. And I, I know they've put a million and a half into it, but if you don't live there, if you don't see Main Street go underwater, if your basement isn't flooding and you aren't losing your furnace and your water heater and everything you store in your basement each time it rains, you don't think that it's an important issue, or when they put the million and a half in, everybody thought that fixed the problem. But it well, it only fixed one phase of it. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And there, there's a lot, lot of more that needs doing, but it's hard to come up with that million and a half all the time. But Miss Lynn, mm -hmm. um, uh, we, we have another call, but I want to say thank you for calling to explain this. But let me tell you this: it is absolutely pathetic, pathetic that we have a problem and we cannot face it. We are living in a community, okay? This is not individualism here where we think for ourselves. Well, we Evan, are living in a community, and that should be fixed. We need to do whatever needs to be done to fix the problem. Right. Part of it is, though, they, 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 the government, thinks that the federal government will step in. From what I understand, the feds will not do it because it is going through a pipe. That now makes it a public utility and the feds do not do it. It is not a wetlands and water course anymore because it has been funneled through this pipe, which is small, which is too small for the amount of water running through there. And so the city has to be the one to come up with the money to do this. It may be state, it may be city, but it is not going to come from the feds. Okay. Well, th thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Bye-bye.
Okay, we lost a caller, so if the caller can, can, can call back. These are the issues that I would like to be brought in the forefront, okay? These are real people, real issues. Yeah, and, and I am so sick and tired of people like that lady for 28 years fighting this issue. She is being ignored, ignored. Why is that? And guess what? That's one lady. Yeah. I know all over the city, okay, people have the same problems. I don't know what the problem is. And, and I know um, I want for us to have this discussion. Why is it that, okay, for 28 years, this city cannot get the East Ditch fixed? What is the problem? Hmm. And she said it herself. I mean, the, the, the um, <coughs> city has needed to invest in various places. We can't, we can't, unfortunately, fix every problem. For 28 years, well, I understand that. Years, but for yes, 28 uh, years, you got a church in, in that area. You got people living in that area for 28 years. They can't try to come up with okay. the money, lobby, I was whoever they need to lobby I was for just this. just figuring out. In 28 years, that city has had seven mayors. Right. Obviously, and then you've got them from all walks of life. The city mm -hmm. had seven mayors over 28 years. Obviously, city funds needed to go elsewhere. And obviously, no one thought this was high enough a okay. priority. I Matt Grimes, Matt Grimes, let me tell you this. Okay, I want you to think about how many times Ridgefield, Brookfield, and Bethel, okay, literally give money away. Give money away. Just waste their money, okay? Don't you think after 28 years, they couldn't come up with the money to fix this problem? We throw money away so from them like crazy. One thing okay? I'll say, I mean, my two cents on this is, um, sometimes the zoning laws uh, seem a bit intrusive, especially when related to wetlands and con the conservation of wetlands. But when you're building on, on what, I don't know the specifics of this, but from what she was saying, it sounds like it's a, it's a wetland area that floods. Uh, developers are always going to try and push and push and push and, and, and try and create more land that they can build on, which is fine. But if we ignore the wetlands restrictions and allow this building to go on, like the, the right. lady That's said, the that problem. water has to go somewhere. Exactly. So I know it's, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty, but maybe building in this area uh, wasn't the best idea to begin with. Okay, Carlo, you're in the air. And how much money is donated every year from the city to uh, various organizations? Cool. Well, uh, Mr. What, Lopez, what, what kind of no organizations? Idea. Mr. Lopez, what kind of well, well, different nonprofit organizations, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Probably like millions. And half dollars every year that gets donated out, isn't it? No. I'm sorry. What was your question, sir? How much money gets donated out to nonprofit organizations from the city of Danbury? I don't know. Every year. I don't know, but probably millions, right? No, no, no. I don't think it's it has to be in the millions. It's over no. a million dollars every year. Right. Uh, I would agree with you on that. The people aren't aware that that much money is being donated out, so that much money could actually go to fix the problem. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you very much, caller. All right. All right. You know, in fact, in fact, right, it is actually is is being um, the, the the Democrats at City Hall right now um, are challenging the uh, the 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 mayor because um, if if you are listening, please call because the question is that the. City Hall is ditching all that money out to, you know, to, to non-profit organizations, but there's no accountability. We don't know what they do with the money, okay? And so, well, there's a call. <laughs> we have three minutes, there's a call. And, and we don't know. So we, we've ditched money out, but here we have a real issue here that's not being fixed. And these non-profit organizations, that to me, they're doing the same, most of them are doing the same job, the same thing. So I'm going to wait until this stop blanking. Uh, he, he, he has a point. He has a point. Call out your name. Hey, uh, Ivan. Uh, <clears throat> how you doing, Julio? Hi. Um, I was just uh, wondering uh, what other candidates are out there for mayors that you only said Tom Sadi. I tell you one thing right now. I haven't heard his name, but I know one name that's been jingled around, and that's Mayor uh, the, the former Mayor Dyer. That's true. And uh, if I heard he that ever too. ran because of what happened before all that would be wiped out because we all know what happened he would sweep this area i believe that mayor dyer though okay. mayor dyer has since changed parties from what he used to be and he's would have to challenge the current mayor in a primary though he's no mayor dyer is no longer a democrat so well, i i understand and i know him pretty well and uh well, I, every time i see him in the stores or something like that from what i do for a living you know he's 
You know, he's, he knows what the issues are, and he knows how to deal with them. Okay, good. All right, Carlo. All right. Thank you very much. Well, here you go. Uh, Jimmy, Jimmy Dyer. <laughs> Jimmy Dyer. Uh, I don't know why he said he haven't heard about Town Saudi, but I heard about Town Saudi. But anyway, um, next week, please tune in to watch the mayor's speech. And we have one minute. I would like to say thank you very much. If you guys can, like, five seconds, just say something. I, I just really want to thank Eric Conrad for being here again. Absolutely. Not often that thank we you. see the uh, man behind mm -hmm. the newspaper. <laughs> right. Come again. Mm -hmm. uh, and thank you. And I would like to, uh, you know, have the opportunity of coming back because I have some issues that I uh, would like to bring up uh, that I think would be interesting to for the citizens of Danbury to be aware of. Okay, thank you. Richfield, you representing. Thank I you very much. I uh, appreciate the opportunity to represent Richfield on this panel and enjoyed the discussion very much. Yes, we have the money guy from Richfield, which yeah. is good. <laughs> and then, um, of course, um, you know, um, uh, Matt Grimes. But we have to go. Thank you very much. Please, next week, the mayor's speech. Thank you. Very